At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Stephen, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. I'm having a midlife crisis, I think, for the last 10 years. Maybe more at this point. I really don't know. I'll explain more on the show, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bye. So did you buy a Porsche for your midlife crisis? Mm-mm, Stephen. It has nothing to do with cars. <laughs> you know, I don't care about cars. <laughs> it's more It's more kids. It's more kids. It's more family. Kids. It's more life. It's yeah, man. I'm like old and is it, is it time for another? This is 40 video. No, because now I'm 42 and well, it's that's the what same I mean. shit It'll and be, nothing changes. 42. I mean, and we'll just changes. play the same video. <laughs> well, I'm not. It's not like I'm complaining. I understand. I I'm in a, a pretty good spot, right? I, and I don't want for anything. And we've done a great job building what we've built. And that's afforded me certain things. And also, you know, I was a late bloomer with everything, and that even uh, accounts in business too. So maybe the other family thing will will pop up. But, sure, I you mean, know, it's, like, it's not like I don't try. Of course, but it's like you you've really focused hard on your your business and career, and now it's time to focus on the personal side. Trying, yeah. trying. It's just every time you talk. Wait, wait. I don't want to say it because because <laughs> Stu, my buddy Stu, Beef Stu, who okay. has the Beef Stu Barnsey this and is the, the Bowler, right? The Bowler. So he calls me the other day and he goes, "Is there an episode where you can't say where you don't say the three letter word that starts with a G?" I'm like. <laughs> No, I don't. But see, I was just going to say something. Now he's got me all thinking, like, don't say that word. He wants to see if there's a whole episode I can go. He was going to text you and then he's gonna be like, that is true, though. You do pretty much say that every single episode. But I was going to bring up the, the girl that I met and she told me that she was very. Was she? I'm not saying it. <laughs> I will not say it this whole episode. Screw you, Stu. Uh, you got me all thinking about saying that word that I'm not gonna, I'm not going to bring it up this time. God damn it. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> anyway, on on this episode, we're going to talk about some stuff with Steven. Yes. We've got uh, prepping to move the studio. Ugh. We got me going back to camp, which kind of is very similar to the, the voicemail thing. We got to talk about the Sony a6700, using it in the real world, uh, as well as talking about gear from a standpoint of what really actually matters. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about me heading back to Vegas. If we have time, we'll talk about threads and Taylor Swift having an Instax camera from years ago that might be selling for 1800 freaking dollars. Oh my God. Yeah. 1800 freaking dollars for an Instax camera. That's just says Taylor Swift on it. <laughs> now, what is really cool is if you press the shutter button and you point it at a, at a bed, she shows up naked. Oh, now, wouldn't that be fun if it developed? That's a great idea. Could buy eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> now, wait. Could you could you imagine a camera company like, like th- you get these pre-exposed Instax pictures, and then when you point it at something, it's like double, double exposure, exposure. <laughs> right? But in this case, it could be a big dick. Oh, <laughs> who's that? Who's the big black guy? <laughs> They're yeah, always showing him guy. everywhere. I, I forget. I forget. But, <laughs> but he was yeah. like a porn star or something. I think he, he was not a porn star. No, no. He was just a guy with a well endowed. I've read the whole story of his life. <laughs> of course you did. I did. I wanted who to has know more. time to read that stuff. Someone put out a, 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 an article about who he was and what happened. He's dead. But the, I thought he died. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. So they just like he was a big dude and he liked women and he liked Barry he a, Wood was his name. Well, because his real name was Barry Wood. I doubt it, but <laughs> not like know. my real name's the Hebrew Hammer, often referred to as huge penis guy. <laughs> That's what it I says. Wanna be, I want to be known as Jacques <laughs> Dixon. I do have a porn name, by the Jack way. Jack Mehoff. No, I, it's Jack Mayhoff. But I Mayhoff. did come up with a porn name years ago. It was Leroy Ballstein. Oh yeah, <laughs> Leroy for the Afro, you know, and then Ballstein. For being Jewish. <laughs> Leroy Ballstein. No, what's... You don't have one? Huh? Sorry, I'm reading up on this Barry Wood guy. <laughs> you're, you're, you got stuck on wood? Uh, <laughs> you got stuck on me. Can we move on, Stephen? Fascinating Steven? article. <laughs> Fa- it is a fascinating article about Barry's wood. Um, but anyway, so speaking of, of wood, you, um, you have some updates to your nursery? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a fun time putting up the ceiling fan the other day. I wanted to freaking kill myself. Uh, we finally got it painted, so the painting is done. We got the furniture in. 
Uh, the fan has been installed by yours truly. I, I switched out like the smoke alarm with the Nest Protect system, which I have pretty much throughout my entire house. Those are awesome, by the way, because it'll tell you, it'll warn you before like the smoke alarm is about to go off and you can mute it if you wanted to. Uh, it'll ding and tell you if it's going off, if you're not home. Uh, they're not cheap, though. That's the only thing. But anyway, back to the fan. I went to install the ceiling fan the other day. I got junction boxes installed a few weeks back and I go to put the blades up and they just, they're not sitting right. The entire time I'm like putting them off and on and trying to, it's almost like a, a jigsaw puzzle trying to figure it out. And I realized that one of the fan blades, it was like forged wrong. The metal on it, it looked like they like over poured the mold or something like that. So there was like too much metal and it wasn't sitting right, like snug in between the other blades. So I had to literally file it down. In the end, I got it to work and then I turn it on and it's wobbling like crazy, which is not good. Uh, so I eventually balanced it all out and fixed it, but it was such a pain in the ass. And what I never used before, by the way, <laughs> have you ever installed a ceiling fan? No, Steven, I hire people to do shit that I don't do. Oh, well, it's it's not hard. Usually it takes like 20 minutes and you're done. But this one I had a major problem with. I've, I've installed yeah. three other fans in this house with no issue. They come with these little balancing kits. They're literal like, uh, like clothespins that you can put on the end of each blade to find out which blade is causing the wobble, essentially, like which one is not balanced correctly. And then they come with these little adhesive weights that you stick on after the fact to then balance it out, add more weight or take off weight, whatever it may be. And it worked like a charm, man. That fan is whisper quiet now, doesn't wobble at all. Uh, I was going to reach out to the company because I thought I was screwed because again, this mold was just over poured and I had to file it down. And then I'm thinking, all right, well, I took off a lot of weight on that mold. Is this going to screw up the fan? But in the end, the balancing kit worked out and I've never had to use it before. And I'm like, well, it's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Fan Talk. Thank you. Uh, That's my fan, fan story. That's great. Now you have a fan and, and, and I just hope it doesn't fall on your kid. Oh, trust me. I, uh, I triple checked everything. We're good to go now. But the room's pretty much done. We only need to uh, add some artwork, some wall decor. We don't, I got we artwork. Like a mirror do you, want, up. you want some photos? You can put a mirror on the ceiling? No. So the baby can see themselves? Oh, look at me. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want a heavy mirror falling and crashing on them by accident. That's true. That's true. And then the fan falling off the wall on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. But yeah, we just got to put up some more decor and then uh, we're pretty much good. We got to still open half of the gifts from the baby shower and put them away. Uh, Did you get so many yet? clothes? Still nothing from you. Still nothing. From Wasn't Uncle invited. Nothing. Wasn't invited. Shouldn't have to be invited to give me a gift. I didn't know. How am I supposed <laughs> to know this? I'm kidding. I'm not invited. We have so many clothes now. It's ridiculous. I'm grateful for it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and I've heard you'll go through them like crazy. So what, what's funny is I, um, you, I usually give the gift of, of photography. You know, I'll come and photograph their kid and Can't give them do the it photos and stuff. Because daddy's no, but a the photographer. The funny thing is for my friend, I think their kid's 10 or 11. And I told them, I gave them the gift, right? When they had their kid. It And, and it's a, it's a, it's a, uh. I typed it up and it says, this is redeemable. This certificate is redeemable for one photo shoot before your kid turns 18. The kid's fucking 11 already <laughs> and they still haven't used so, it. So is that a $10,000 value? No, I put a million dollar value on it. I really put a million dollar value. I'm like this. You should have put priceless. <laughs> I wrote a million. This is a million dollar gift. Million dollars. Anyway, we are in the process of prepping to move studios um, we have another building that is not far away and we're going to move over to there. I'm going to rent out this bad boy that we're currently in and yeah, we're basically going to set up the, the new spot. So being that I'm going to rent this out to someone, I've got to prepare to get out of here so that they can start getting in here. I did reach out to some of the movers because rule number one, if you're ever moving, don't do this. Don't think that you're going to go get a U-Haul for one, and don't think that you're going to talk to all your friends and give them <laughs> beer and pizza. This is exactly what I did, by the way. Do not moved. do this. <laughs> do not do that ever. Spend the 800 fucking dollars. Spend the 800 to a thousand dollars. One, it saves your back. You don't have to carry all the things. You don't have to worry as much. You don't have to drive a truck that you've never driven. Because do you know how many times you see U-Hauls hit other cars because people don't know how to drive? I saw this girl. I'm interrupting myself. There was this girl trying to turn down a street. She should have never been on that street in the first place. She just got so frustrated because, well, one, a car wasn't parked in a good spot. And she got so frustrated that she fucking sideswiped it and then just kept going because she was like, I can't do it. 
I, I am surprised they don't make you have any type of special license or anything like that. You could just anybody with a license can just drive one of these giant 20 foot trucks around like me, myself, when I first moved in this house, uh, first and only house. You don't have five. I was renting at the time. So I only had one bedroom at the place I rented at. So there was not much to move. It was my bed frame. My desk I ended up throwing out. Too much work. There wasn't much at all, though. So I rented a U-Haul, and we only filled up half of it, if that. And yeah, I, I paid my friends in pizza and beer, and we uh, we did it. <laughs> but renting That's... the U-Haul alone was like 300 bucks or something. And it takes forever. And I remember driving that thing being like, I should not be driving this. I feel very uncomfortable. Exactly. And they just hand and... over the keys to anybody. They do. And, and it, but see, when you break it down, I did, the, I like, I looked into it once and I was like, super Jesus, cheap. It's going to cost a couple hundred bucks just to get the U Haul. Then I have to go get the U Haul, which means someone has to drop me off there and then drive back. And then I got to drive the thing. Then I got to return the U Haul at the end of the day. I may even need to fill it with gas. Like, I got to do. do that. You have to refill all, it up. All, all, and then I still have to do all the work. I have to lift shit. I have to have my friends lift shit. I don't want that. So, even if it costs you $1,500 to move, the wear and tear on your body, the wear and tear on everything else, the mental stress of doing it, it's just so much easier to hire someone. They have people that do this every day. They carry the shit. Now, we don't have beds or anything to move. I started to put together the, the list of what it is because we have to get an estimate for moving. Mm. And um, it may be after you know two days later than what I said, but I'm sure the people will not have a problem with that but i just need to get something in the books just so that we we, we have it because i guess they said it's a busy time of year for whatever reason um but we're literally going around the corner and there's certain things that we're going to move ourselves but we've got baker's racks we've got shelves we've got four up desks they aren't that hard to move we've got a small sofa we got four like chairs the 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 ones from the sets we got a bunch of stuff we got light stands we've got a ton of stuff you're leaving move. the flat file, I assume. You can't really roll that the thing out. The flat file's not going anywhere. If, what if about anything, the, the lockers that we have? I don't want the lockers. I really don't give a shit about them either. But remember, Todd and I, we, would, we put it all the way upstairs and then brought it all the way down? Yeah, yeah, that was stupid. Talk about killing your back. Yeah, that was stupid. That was just dumb. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. if you look up dumb, you guys moved those lockers upstairs. I'm like, what are you doing? So anyway, we've got we've got a lot to do to move. But the other thing is, I did pack up some uh, think tank rollers with some stuff like all the Nikon gear that we don't use, all the DSLR stuff that I still have, that went into a roller. I packed up the Canon DSLR stuff. The amount of um, Canon uh, mirrorless cameras and DSLRs that we have They're on the shelf so, is, is we, funny. We've had that one DX Mark III sitting there since it came out. Probably used it once, right? Uh, we used it. We did a really good video with it. We did a couple yeah, good videos. Was that, that was like that was the the understanding that oh my god, if Canon really wanted to do a full mirrorless camera. That is this. Just rip the mirror because that's how that's how I shot it. Remember, we I shot it on. with a loop on the back, yep. like attached to the back. I'm like, this is the, how you shoot. This is mirrorless. This is so much better. Um, but yeah, that was a camera that's a fantastic camera. It just was a little late in the game. So the only thing I'm concerned about with the moving is, you know, there's so many other precious items for them to move, not just a, a few camera bodies, but it's like your whole photo news fix set is all antique cameras. Like, how, how are we going to move that? Just put them in a bunch of totes and move it ourselves or are we going to trust them? Well, there's certain things we're just going to roll down the street because we I'm just looking at your frame right now. We've got like the slider behind you. We've got a bunch of stuff that's like uh, you don't, really don't want to mess around with even the um, the lighting, all the Kino flows. Yeah. I just think there's a certain thing. We, we have the Kino flow case in the basement. Um, not that we should ever use that. We should just throw it out. <sighs> yeah. Um, actually, we probably need to bring it because it has all the extra lights in it. Not that, you know, it's been like eight years and we haven't changed the light except for the one when you knocked over the light when and you came broke crashing it. down. <laughs> but it had a light guard on it, which was great. So it kept all the stuff in it. I think only one bulb broke too, right? Maybe yeah, one too? bulb broke, yeah, something yeah. like that. But we had replacements at the time. That was probably the best purchase I made, thanks to Todd taking us to a business that was going out of business. And yep. I, I think I paid like three grand for the entire setup. Like 10 grand worth of lights, yeah. I wrote him a check right there. I'm like, I could use these. And they and gave that us was, the C-stands and everything too. That was a pretty big deal back in the day for us to get. But there's a lot of stuff. So I'm going through the shelves. I already packed up the, um, the, the empty boxes and empty stuff you didn't know this already they're in three boxes they could be moved so is this jared packing though like just throwing a bunch of shit randomly in bags well steven no i used a big box and i played tetris and so it's nice and even these are just empty bo camera boxes you know 
A1, R3, M50, okay. all of that. That's just stuff that's easily put in a box that we can then put on a shelf and gotcha. use them in backgrounds. I think that's going to look cool. But I'm also coming a- across stuff that we've had here since we moved in, in 2016, 2015, that we haven't even used. And I think it's a lot I of think it. we need to have an open house for friends that we know but i don't even think there's going to be so, like there's led lights ring lights that we'll never use we've never used them i should just give those away uh, and honestly a lot of that stuff too is fairly outdated at this point too when you when you think about today's technology with lighting and everything else uh, but there's like you know we have those little turntables that are uh motorized that i would like to use but i just never had the space to permanently set them up so i think there's gonna be a lot of stuff that now i can actually like utilize a corner somewhere and make this a permanent setup and and really use them but yeah the basement like for example what do we have just a ton of bags and shit down there there's so many camera bags there's a lot of stuff i need to get basically a i don't know if i should get a dumpster or a hauler probably a hauler that comes and you pay them like a couple hundred bucks yeah. and they just get rid of all the stuff. But there's, if something is usable, my first course of action is going to be to give it away. Well, I think you donated um, a lot too, right? I've always given away stuff to people, but there's, there's things like there's a server, there's a Synology five bay server sitting on the thing. It has six terabyte hard drives in there. We must've used it at some point. I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, it has, it's, it has their IP address and everything on it. So we might've actually used it at some point, but I'm never going to use that five bay thing. Yeah. I'm going to give that away to someone who needs it. I still have like my Drobo right behind me. Well, that's another just thing. get rid of that. When I moved my house, my other my other house, when I moved to my my new house, I packed everything up from that office that I had in my in my old loft, and it, some of that stuff is still in boxes. It's been three over three years, so if I haven't used it in three years, but there's two Drobos in there. Do I just use that on the set? We plug them in because they have lights on them, and it could be like a set piece. Part part of the the urgency going on at the moment is we got to move. Yep, the place. I mean, that's self-inflicted urgency personally, but it's going to suck, but it's going to be well worth it. It needs to get done, but it also needs to get done before Steven is is out for two weeks. Yeah, the, the timing is a little uh, poor on our end for sure, but uh, it is what it is. You should have put a ring on it. Hey, if she's coming early, though, uh, I'm out. That's all I got to say. I know. But I, I don't know. think that's going to be the case because our due date's August 26th. So if we're if we're trying to be out by August 1st, I think we're good. Anyway, the move the move's got to happen, and I'm going to reach out to people. If we've got stuff here to sh- to to get rid of, I will talk to certain people about donating. But they're going to come and get it. Um, I guarantee yeah. I could fill up an entire room of stuff that we can give away. All right, we're going to do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I basically the one started thing, though, without you anyway. Before, well, that's what I'm getting to. Before you really go nuts with starting to pack stuff up, please let me organize it before hold you on. just throw random shit in boxes. Hold on, Steven. And then I get to the new place and I'm like, what is all this? So hold on, Steven. I started putting gaff tape on certain things and writing what's in the bags. Good. That's just for the big bags. I left your other shelves alone that are yours. I put, I moved your, all your cable management to another shelf for now. There's a, there's a get rid of shelf and there's a don't touch because this is all Steven's going to do this. All the <laughs> audio stuff, all the road stuff, all the lighting stuff. That's all for you. I'm only doing the shit that you know that, that we haven't touched in fucking five years. Yeah. And that's totally fine. And like you said, like the empty camera boxes, I don't give a shit about them. We should probably throw half them out or, or try and make a new, uh, make a new set, a new lens review set of some sort. Yeah. Put them in the background. I think that would be really cool. But uh, yeah, I just want to make sure everything's fairly organized because every time it's every time you tell me you cleaned up, <laughs> you just take a bunch of stuff from the table and throw it in random cubby holes. Yeah, I move and it. And then I got shit everywhere. And I'm like, wait, this was the audio cubby hole. And now it's filled with cameras and lenses and ND filters, all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's that. So that that we got to get worked on and we're going to do that. But I went back to my summer camp and my um my brother uh, has his niece, uh, my niece and nephew are going there where we went as where my brother and I went as kids in like 1988, 1989. Oh, to like the 92. actual one. Yeah. Yeah. The same summer camp that we, we grew open. up going wow. to. Okay. Well, yeah. New owners bought it a while back from the owners that were getting older and these guys love camp and they, you know, the crazy thing is the camp is very similar to when I was there. They, they talked about keeping it very similar and only updating certain things that needed to be updated and keeping it so that people do come back and they remember that it's just not totally knocked down and, and wasn't what it was. Now it's been improved. Um, now we went to watch the, the kids do um, a performance like the boys bunks and the girls bunks would do performances hmm. on the stage. And the same thing holds true as when I was there, the 
boys do a half-assed job because they don't <laughs> practice, right? They, they're told they have to go do this. And the girls, they spend the time practicing. And this is a generalization, but I think it still holds true that women, girls, little girls tend to be more organized when it comes to doing choreography and wanting to do that and putting on a show. Whereas generally speaking, most boys want to go play sports and beat each other up and don't care. And of course there's occasionally that boy that is very future that word and they put on a great performance, (laughs) right? Or there's a girl who's more of a tomboy but I can't say generalization that those people are tomboyish. I do love, I'm always attracted to those tomboyish types. I wonder um, why. When, when they're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, stew. <laughs> God damn you, beef stew. You're trying to make me say that word, which I'm not going to say, but you're going to think it. Anyway, so the, the kids put on the performance. It was fun. It was cool to be back there. Um, definitely made me tear up a few times uh, in general, just because it, it reminds me of my mom slightly because sure. she was always there when we got home from camp. Um, and it makes you think about that stuff. It also makes you think that I was there 32 plus years ago. Wow. And, and it makes you feel terrible, made me feel, feel sad and like, oh my God, how much fun was this? As a kid, you got all these things things you go to camp for for eight weeks and you play around it was day camp so it wasn't overnight camp but you you go and you know you see all the things that you see there and you're like i i did that there and that was fun and you remember that and then the other thing for me was seeing like parents and grandparents watching their kids and being all excited and happy and i'm standing there like yay yeah i never because i don't have that i never did camp I kind of always wanted to just because I would watch like uh, Salute Your Shorts and Camp Anawana and <laughs> Heavyweights and, you know, Fat Camp and that you could eat whatever you wanted until Ben Stiller that, came. <laughs> yeah, girl was hot. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was. But uh, yeah, I always wanted to do camp and never did. I think my parents couldn't afford it at the time. I mean, they had six kids, so they were uh, they were on the budget for sure. Camp is definitely expensive. Um, it's probably about a thousand dollars a week. I mean, I mean you're basically I, paying for a daycare. Yeah, it covers food. It covers transportation. So you get picked up in the morning and dropped off in the afternoon. I also was a counselor at this camp, too. I was a camp counselor for the for kids. How old were you when you did that? I was in my 20s. Okay, that's cool. Your mid 20s. But I mean, it's it's an unbelievable. There's some people that that have been there since it opened in in the 80s, Um, like some swim instructors and some some people have been there for over 30 years what's and the one show wet hot american summer where they're all yeah, like hot wet american summer that's it. yeah or wet hot whatever it was whatever that it was, was a, yeah. that movie i never saw it but it was great and then that show came out where it continued the picked series up, yeah they picked up 10, 20 years later 30 years later and it's just it was Paul actually Rudd trying to look like he's like 20 years old <laughs> it was actually really good that series yeah hot wet hot american summer yeah that that was quite a stacked lineup of actors oh yeah janine garofalo uh so many so good um but no the the, the camp experience was fantastic uh and it just made me think about um my friend evan udell listens to this he was a he was the the kid that everybody one of the kids people picked on because he was goofy he literally was goofy evan you know you were goofy he's this tall lanky kid right and he'd be like doop a doop a doop a doop a doop he's probably laughing at this right now because he's reminiscing and having flashbacks of getting getting picked on which i didn't pick on him i did much probably i may have picked on him a little but i also protected him too because i like to befriend the kid that is always the the kid that wasn't whatever but yeah no he was funny but then i i told you i i hung out with him years ago like a couple years ago and i mean this kid turned out to be six something and he's fucking jacked and he's doing really well and he's got a great family life going on and i'm really happy for him and he's and he's still he's still goofy evan you're still goofy but that's that's okay you'll never not be goofy <laughs> so he does listen he, he doesn't live close by but he does text we talk business um yeah, he works with the app developers I worked with. I connected them. They do some stuff. Anyway, he's, oh, cool. he's successful there. So, uh, so camp, let's not talk about that. Oh, oh, the one thing I wanted to talk about camp, like I wanted to take photos for, at the camp for the camp, right? I don't want the pictures. Is that a no go because of the kids? Well, I made it like, it, so I asked them, I sent the guy an email. I'm like, it was great being back there. The crazy thing was we walked around, my brother and I walked around a little. And then of course we got stopped by the owners. They're like, Oh, you see two men walking around. I'm like, no, that's good that you stopped us, but no, we're yeah, here. Yeah. Can we walk around? And so when I walked into the arts and crafts room, the smell hit me instantly and, and transported me back yep. 30 years. There's nothing stronger than the, than the smell. 
and it, it instantly took me back. I was like, holy shit, that remi- that's like straight reminiscent. It is crazy um, how triggering that stuff is. It is totally triggering. And so uh, I sent an email. I'm like, look, I'd love to take candid images, come to camp for a day or two, take these images. This is what I do. Here's what I've done. By the way, I'm a hockey official, which means I in Pennsylvania, you have to get safe sport to work with kids. You have to go through this process. I've gone through the process. I've had all the background checks. I can work with kids. So that's all well and good. And they're like, thanks for the offer. We appreciate it, but we're good on photos. And I just want to be like, what do I want to be like, Steven? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? <laughs> I just want Priceless to be like, photography by the I'd one like, and only Jared Polin. I get $10,000 a day to photograph. <laughs> I get $10,000 a day. That's what I charge. <laughs> and so I'm like, I, I said to them, I'm like, I don't want any money. I want to do this because people don't take good photos and they don't have great photos of their, their kids. And you can use the photos for whatever you want them for. I just don't like being denied. It's almost like that girl telling me that she's very, when I asked her out, you know, and I'm like, what does that even mean? But Uh, I just don't like being denied in this situation where it's like, there's no reason for you to say no. There's no legitimate reason that, that I've given you to say no to saying, to turning that down an opportunity with someone like of my pedigree. But I also said, I'm not using, I don't want to use the photos for anything. I will not use the photos for anything. They're for you to give to the kids and to give to the camp and, and to have as an archive. Yeah, I guess it gets a little hairy when you're dealing with kids and underage kids and all of that. But I see your point, but I also see why they, they denied take pictures. You. Yeah, but they take pictures like they have a but portal. That's not some random person coming and saying, hey, can I take pictures for you guys? And I'm also not some random thing. I have a blue check mark, Stephen. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I well, I'm well known, and it's very easy to. I can give you everything you need to give. I even, you know, I talked about the whole thing about being able to work with kids because I have all of that. Yeah. And so, I mean, most of the people that work at camps are teachers and and everything. And um, anyway, so. I don't know if they'll change their mind. So they, I did email back. I gave it a second instead of being like, do you know who I am? I was just like, (laughs) I'm like, what is your hesitation? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what is your hesitation? Because like you said, they, they will get some great photos out of it. I'm not like, I would go there and I would take a 400 two eight. I take the R three. I would photograph the kids swimming. I photograph the kids playing all the sports. I get pictures of so many kids. Do you think though you would try and turn it into content somehow? No, I said I wouldn't. Okay. I will not turn it into content. No, no, I, know, no I, I know you said you wouldn't, but like if you had to test out a new camera. I wouldn't be testing out a new camera okay, there. Okay, good. No, I, I don't think you should. absolutely not do it. You, you've done that before where you've taken pictures of children in public spaces, even though it's a private public. camp. This is private. Yeah. So this is a different situation. And I, I made it abundantly clear that I would not do that. That's not what I'm there to do. Yeah. Um, but whatever. It, it is what it is. So let's move on to speaking of another camera that that I took around the country. The uh, the Sony a6700 came out. We we had it for about a month, which was very nice that they give it to you for a month. I was able to shoot the Phillies, the 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 Philadelphia Union, took it out to Chicago where I was with Manny Ortiz shooting it at the Cubs game, took it out to Slam Ball in Vegas. And uh, do, do you want to talk about specs? I really don't want to go into specs because we already put out those videos and I'm pretty sure people know that. Obviously, watch the video to really understand what this camera offers and get the full specs and all of that. But my biggest thing is I just thought they would have killed their APS-C line at this point. I mean, it's been four years, uh, and I really thought they were focusing on full frame, especially when they have affordable full frame cameras now in the way of the A7C. Uh, I'm sure when the A7C II comes out, which is probably fairly soon, if I had to guess, that's going to be around the same price, maybe a What's little that, more. What's that, Steven? What am I holding oh, in my hands oh, right now? Was I not supposed to say it again? Did my hands again? are empty. I do not have an A7C2 in my hands. Uh, but they're saying this also was not specifically the flagship of the APS-C lineup. So is there and maybe shows. an A7000 one day? Are they going to do an A6800? Who knows? But uh, at the end of the day, they did a great job, I think, with the body and finally kind of redesigning that. Except for the EVF is in the wrong place. The EVF and the touchscreen, which we, we talk about in the video, how it's still low resolution, shitty quality. Off to the left side. Yep. But, uh, you know, it now has basically the A7C body with a beefed up grip. It finally has a front dial control. There is no joystick, which I still am a big stickler for joysticks. And it does have that new mode dial where your thumb kind of rests, which is very nice. But the grip is the biggest thing for me. They finally made their A6000 series cameras 
uh, feel like a real camera. But I don't know, when you put it up against like the R7, it doesn't really look and feel like a real camera. That one looks like a real camera and feels like it because you got the EVF in the middle. You got a nice beefy grip, two card slots, IBIS, 30 frames a second. And then this camera you now have that 26 megapixel sensor from the FX30. Which is really good. It is really good, and it's pretty fast, too. Now, you know, you still can't shoot all sports, like we mentioned in the video. Uh, same with the R7, though. You really can't with the electronic shutter on that because the readout speed is almost the same in the electronic shutter for, for this camera and for the R7. It's really only meant for, like, shooting silent, you know, which is why they still gave it the 11 frames per second, or you could the shoot same birds. frame rate. I mean, that's the thing. Is it's fine with birds? It was. It would be fine with subjects moving through the air, just really not balls or bats. It'll still warp the bird, but it might not be as you know noticeable as a, a round object like a ball. But yeah, so a much faster sensor readout, the 11 frames per second. It only has one UHS-2 card slot, which is a little annoying for the price. Uh, and again, Canon's has two. It's got the dedicated AI processor from the A7R5, which I thought the focusing was pretty solid. Uh, there are times, though, I still noticed it being like on the pitcher's face and saying that it's on the pitcher's face with the green box, but it's out of focus. I noticed that a yeah. few times with the EVF clips that you gave me, but that's, yeah. you know, 1% of the time. It was still, yeah, the, in certain situations, it was a little struggly, and then you just have to jostle the camera to, to, to knock it out of, you know, basically move around that focusing point because you don't have a joystick. Yeah, and they're saying the IAF was improved by like 60%. They're saying the bird and animal hit rate is by 40% improved. They took away the uncompressed raw option. I thought that was kind of odd. It's now just lossless compressed or compressed. I guess to really get that 11 frames per second and not to uh, hinder the frame rate if you want to do uncompressed. I will I will say um, the image quality on the JPEGs was really good, except when you start processing the JPEGs. Like I can tell you that JPEGs were fantastic out of the camera. They look so much better than on camera because of how garbagey the screens are. But when you got the JPEGs into the computer, when you tweak them with Skittles and, and other presets, they look fantastic. But of course, this is I would not ever change from shooting raw to, to in, in, in favor of JPEG because you can see how crispy and crunchy it ends up getting quickly, oh, yeah. whereas the raw file doesn't. But I mean, the you're images look 8-bit, you know, 8-bit JPEGs. It's rough. Well, the images look great. And the thing that I, that I want to remind people is that if I posted, which I honestly did post an image from the game after the game of Bryce Harper and where I was shooting, but you couldn't tell what I was shooting with or what I shot it with. I stripped the metadata just in case, but no one is going to look at my Phillies photos from Chicago and sit there and say, was this done with an APS-C camera? Yeah. No one would do that. And that brings now, up a, a whole, what? You also had some super expensive fast glass on there. So that really that, is what separated you. And it didn't look like in a simple, you know, uh, APS-C camera. And that's why I have stressed for years, glass, 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 as a starting point, because I didn't start with good glass because it wasn't explained to me. And one, I couldn't afford it. But today, there are so many used options or better options that are not that much more expensive to get you that 2.8 or better. I don't find that like I have the 7200 F4 that Sony has it's fine I don't like F4s and the reason I don't like F4s is and then variable the aperture, body well right and I don't like F4s and and the uh, variable apertures of 5 6 uh, 5 and 5 to 6 3 and 7 1 is there is just you don't get this definition and contrast and sharpness and clarity and separation you just don't get the same zhush that you get with something that's a 2 8 or better I agree. You know, you get that three dimensional pop, especially when you're using like a two eight or better on a full frame body. Like, for example, when we shot the actual video uh, in S log three with the a sixty seven hundred in the studio at your desk where we normally shoot most of the videos with the R five. I noticed a, a big difference just in terms of the depth. Obviously, you're going to have much more in focus. And we shot that wide open on a thirty five one four where we normally shoot at like fifty one two. Uh, on a Canon full frame R5. So I noticed right away, like there's a big separation difference. And that's why I don't love APS-C uh, unless you're shooting with like one, two lenses or something like that, uh, because you don't get that pop like you normally do with full frame. Right. And, and the, the thing I want to really bring up right now is that technology has changed drastically in 20 some years since I started shooting oh, yeah. digital in in the last 12 13 years since starting Frono's photo we've gone from basic DSLRs to where we are today it's insane just in the last four or five years right but what I what I want to hammer home though is 
just because we talk about new gear, that's what that's what we do. New stuff comes out. People want to hear what we have to say about it. There is no reason you need to go dump any camera system that you have or yep. any camera that you have. You need to focus on fundamental fun, fundamentals and quality glass. I've proven time and time again back in the day where I did the super secret project where you take the D3000 and put on a 35.18 that was a super cheap lens and get quality results. When we went to... Um, Germany and we I use that 24 to 105 f4 ideally I don't want to have to use an f4 I don't but it was a very versatile lens for what I was doing and the results that I got were fantastic and no one is gonna again at the end of the day is gonna sit there and say did you use an f4 lens and you didn't use a 1.4 the people are looking at the images that you're capturing very few people almost none are gonna sit there and be like oh that amazing picture that you got oh you did that with a shitty camera and lens it's no good so I just want people to understand that when we talk about this new stuff it's not telling you that you should sell yours because yours isn't good I can turn around and when we do the video guide we will break out a dslr and go through the process of doing a shoot that way because it's important to show you that you can and when you are not a full-time professional it doesn't matter what you shoot with just enjoy it and love it when you are a full-time professional i always tell people or a working to be a professional the day that your gear is hindering your ability to get the job done and you end up missing things that you shouldn't miss and you're it's hindering your ability to get paid because you might not get a job after that. That is when you've outgrown that, that system or that camera and it's time to upgrade to something else. But until you are being held back to the point where, and I'm talking about professionals, I'm not talking about the everyday shooter. Like if you're being held back as an everyday shooter and you're missing a thing here and there, but you're still getting great results and you can't afford to upgrade, then don't upgrade. Like that's not the time to do it. But glass, 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 glass is, is super important. Fundamentals of photography, the exposure triangle is super important. Understanding what you're doing is, is beyond important. But when I say 2.8 or better, there's a reason. I want you to save money. If you start buying, another reason I don't like crop sensors, Stephen, is you start investing in crop sensor lenses, you're investing for short term. You're stuck in that system. Yeah. You're stuck on that. That doesn't grow or graduate to a larger, to yep. a full frame body. And if your goal is to graduate to be a professional or upgrade to full frame, then you don't start with garbage glass. You start with if you can, like with the Tamrons and the Sigmas and the Nikon Tamron made lenses, there are so many options out there today or even just used gear to get started quickly for not a lot of money. I told this story a million times at Alan's camera when people would come in and look at the 18 to 55 shit lens and they'd be like, it's so dark. And I'm like, let me go grab the 17 to 52 8 Sigma. It was a 359 or $369 lens, but it was a 17 to 52.8. They put it on and they were like, oh my God, it's so much brighter. I don't have to explain why it's brighter. I just, all I said to them is this lens is going to help you get better pictures while you don't know what you're doing. But then when you do know what you're doing, it's going to help you get better pictures. Uh, yeah. I mean, when I first had like my Rebel XT, the T2i, the 7D uh, going way back, you know, 15 years or so. I always made sure to stick with the EF set of uh, lenses instead of the EFS lenses. You know, minus the kit lens that came with like the XT, whatever that was back in the day. But yeah, I knew one day I would be graduating to the 5D or or to whatever at the time was full frame. But yeah, I always stuck with full frame lenses knowing one day I will upgrade. And yeah, they were a lot more expensive. Half the time they were more expensive than the actual body, but it was well worth it because when I did finally get the 5D Mark II and Mark III and all of that, I had all of the, the glass with me and I was ready to go. I didn't have to sell everything and start over. Now, speaking of the A6700 again, I do think they have the leg up though on versus something like the Canon R7 because you know they do have all those third-party options where Canon, you do have to ad uh, adapt the older EF versions of the Sigma and Tamrons or even the uh, Canon EF glass. And I just think that's not nearly as sharp as today's lenses, uh, the mirrorless lenses. I think you'll notice a pretty substantial difference when you compare it to a, a newer lens in terms of sharpness and all of that. Because we've no I've noticed at least like when I compare and go back in my archive and look at like the 512 or the 8512 on the EF side and compare it to the current RF line, it's night and day. Like, I mean, it doesn't even look sharp when I look back at the older photos and it's not settings or anything like that. It's just the glass did not resolve, especially the higher megapixel cameras back in the day. They're meant to resolve, you know, 15, 20 megapixel sensors, not the sensors of today that are 30 plus. 
So I think you'll you will notice a big difference if you're trying to adapt older, shittier glass at this point with on something like the R7 or even the current R5, R6, all that. It's it's just a matter of I just want everybody to understand that yes, we talk about gear, but don't get gear envy and get the best that you yeah. can for the time that you can, but do it with the understanding that if this is what you want to do, or even if it's you just want better results, that you find a way to get that better glass, whether it's used, whether it's third party, or whether it's adapted, whatever you need to do to get that better glass is going to benefit you much quicker. And, and, and the whole reason I started making these videos, one of the reasons I started making these videos is to educate people to give them a jump start and not make the same mistakes that I made when I started because I didn't have a resource like this that existed. And so, yes, I will continue to push quality glass for everybody. And trust me, it's definitely enticing if you're looking at a new camera and everybody's talking about it and, you know, you're dealing with a four or five year old camera or even a DSLR at this point, you probably want to upgrade. But yeah, do you really need to is the question. Are you a working professional? Like you said, is it hindering your performance? Are you not getting the shot because of it? I mean, if you're dealing with a three frames per second camera from seven years ago and you shoot sports and wildlife, it might be time to upgrade, you know? But I think with the A6700, at the end of the day, it's more of like a, a refresh and an incremental update that was just needed for that A6000 lineup. But if you have an A6600, you probably don't need to upgrade because on paper, they're very similar. Both 11 frames per second, same ISO, same megapixel range, even though, again, that's a much slower readout on the other one. Video specs are fairly the same. You get more, you know, 4K60 and stuff out of this one full frame. But um, it's not really night and day. So I would probably stick with your current uh, A6600 camera instead of having a feeling like you need to upgrade to something like this. And if you're looking to jump into a system, I probably wouldn't start with that. And I know the well, comment section talks a lot about, but there's third party lenses I can get for that. But I'm like, but full frame isn't that much more expensive. And that's the thing. I, I think when the A7C Mark II comes out, uh, I could see that being the new entry level camera on the Sony front. I'd probably much rather have that, even if it's a little bit dumbed down of a frame rate and all of that. I don't really care. But I don't think it's going to match what the R8 does from Canon. I don't know that they're going to have a $1,500 full frame option. That's freaking incredible. And that's I why I keep coming back to that R8 like that. It just feels we I don't know if we use the title. We didn't use the title that said underwhelming. I wanted to do we did underpowered or something. I wanted to do underwhelming because it's great quality from the A6700, but it lacks a lot of stuff. And 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 did I get great results? Absolutely. Cause I'm, I'm good. You know, I use good glass. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Did you see that and, part I put in the video? Yeah, I saw that. I told you to put it in the I video. Know, but that was more like an outtake with just me and you talking to each other. But after that, we're like, yeah, we, we definitely should keep that. Well, in. next time, <laughs> keep it more, more like outtake ish. Maybe make That's it black and white or something. No, I know. But then I'm laughing at you and I tell you to keep it in there. So just keep it like, cause I think you kind of lose out that I told you to keep it in there. Cause that was the whole oh, I think joke it's given. Yeah. I mean, nothing's a given. I rather just, flat out saying you were very just, literal i know i wanted to be very literal i know but i don't think you need to for that i think it's a given that you were joking around especially with the pause kept in yeah but that's that's we we do that from time to time uh, oh, and i, and I kept things. the manny ortiz thing and at the way and if you stuck around for the end of the slideshow the last five seconds there's a little uh little nice tidbit from you and your arms that's right look at those arms so that's what <laughs> friday is friday's arm day that's uh we, we get to do that on fridays um Yep. So I, I, just, I just feel like I, I, I just feel like the camera's fine, but I would not invest personally in an A6700 and crop sensor lenses at all. I would I would I would not do that. I wouldn't recommend that to someone. That's just not what I would do. I think I'm just most disappointed about, again, the same pretty much screen and EV and the left side EVF really annoys me. And just the fact that it only has one card slot. I think for this being pretty much their flagship, not flagship camera on the APS-C side, it should really match the specs of something like the R7 or the, the newer Fujis and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'm heading back out to Vegas on Thursday of next week. Oh, yeah. Thursday afternoon, I'm heading out like four o'clock. Um, uh, this got is another slam ball again. Yeah, slam balls. Actual games are starting. Okay, so it will be on ESPN, the original ESPN, on July 21st. <laughs> I think the first couple games. Um, so I'm going to shoot Saturday. And if you're in Vegas, you can buy tickets to go to it, and then you can buy tickets to see my gun show. What do tickets go for? 
I have no idea, Stephen. Is it just like bleachers you're sitting in, or is it like an actual? No, arena? it's in a stadium oh, okay. at one of the col- at one of the colleges. Um, kind of like Leah Coors I- here in, in Philly. Yeah, but I think it might be smaller. They don't have a lot, but it's really not about watching this in person because it's not like you root for a team because it's not like a a city thing, but it's really meant for at home, but it's going to be good to have fans in the stands. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's meant to be fast action. There's like three games or three games the first session, another three games the next session, and then I'm going to shoot Friday, I'm going to shoot Saturday, and then uh, Sunday I'm flying back home. I will say I, I also used some of the footage that you took with the Insta360 Go 3 that you gave to one of the slam ball players and he used it on his hat, right? Or his, yeah, uh, I, put it on, I put it on his sweatband. I was going through basically. some of that footage. Super cool, man. And I can tell that guy had to be a giant because he's looking down on everybody. That And those people already looked tall. You looked like the smallest human being ever <laughs> next yeah, to well, him because he's looking all the players, way down. Bro. I know. Basketball. It's just crazy. Like from his perspective, you're like, whoa. This is uh this is what they see every time. He's barely jumping to get uh to hit the the rim. Hey little guy. Hey. Hey little guy. Thank you. It's very nice to talk to you. Yeah, basically um so yeah, I'm going to go shoot that, probably use my R3 and uh you're going to do some more 50 frames per second uh no. type shots. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know what the venue looks like. I assume that if, since it's on ESPN it's going to have real lighting but I don't know where I'll be able to shoot from because it has glass boards uh, that you can't I'm not going to shoot through those because there's no holes right well no because it would be too dangerous if a guy gets shoved into the boards and his foot goes in or his arm or his elbow sure it'll be too dangerous so there's different areas I'll be able to go and that's the fun part for me is that the you have to figure it out yeah right well that's it I, I just I honestly wish I had a uh a film crew with me to film the whole process because it would be good for the video guide but that's you well, know bring around the uh insta 360 go 3 again you know maybe even bring around the actual 360 camera put that somewhere just for some b-roll because we it's one of those things where you never know what you're going to get until you come back until the actual event happens so it's always it's nice just, to have that footage just in case something does happen i really wish that i had someone with me for every shoot that i did well i really and wish your r3 also recorded the electronic viewfinder yeah well me too yeah. That's something that Canon Japan refuses to even acknowledge. Yeah. But Nikon, Canon, and uh, Fuji and Panasonic all have options to do it. Sorry, not Canon, Sony. And it, uh, that's just frustrating because it would be great for education. And again, that's why nobody needs that option except us. You know, we're actually <laughs> the truth is, you know, who needs the option now and who's been requesting it? Who? News shooters. They want to be able to shoot photos and be able to get video out of the camera at the same time that's usable online. Oh, they, well, they want like a clean out while they're they, shooting photos, you're do. saying. Yeah, basically. Yeah, but that's not really what we're asking. We're asking for like a dirty out for education. purposes. We want a purposes. dirty out. Yeah. But that's probably, that's why with the, the beginner guide that's going to be coming, or not, sorry, not the beginner guide, the next video guide will be done with an icon because that's what yep. we're going to, we'll be able to record the EVF, but I will dumb it down at certain points. I know that. And then I'll probably use a DSLR to go old school and we'll just have to film it differently, but it's just all about teaching. Um, but yeah, I really wish I had someone for every shoot. Um, do you think it's even worth doing anything with a DSLR these days? I do. Well, the, you got to remember, there's going to be people that are still DSLRs, but I, I just want, I also want to teach people who have, I mean, most uh, of them are mirrorless. probably discontinued though, right? Well, I mean, so what the, a, a 10 year old, 15 year old DSLR is still a viable camera. A D3S is still a viable digital camera, right? A 5D Mark III is still a viable camera. They're all capable of of getting good results. No one's going to know what you shot with. Are there limitations? Of course, but what was once a professional camera is still a professional camera. It just doesn't have all the bells and whistles. I, yeah, like I see they, more, they discontinued the D3500. They still have a lot of the Rebels they sell. I'm more talking about you slow it down so people get an understanding of what it's like to shoot old school. And I will do that probably with the mirrorless too. be like, we're going to go on a shoot and we're going to single frame it. Oh, what we t- actually what we talked about doing Stephen, what we talked about doing was turning off the keeping the EVF on, well, but not having the simulation. The simulation off. Off. Exactly. Right. That's why I don't think you need to shoot with an actual DSLR. I just think you, well, we can still show. Well, yeah, I think that's fine, but I don't think you need to literally pull out a DSLR because it'll be a lot better for the viewer to still see the viewfinder and see what you're seeing through the OVF simulation. But we can show it and explain it better in well, the I video itself. I have to turn itself. off the lock on track because you would still I have be, to turn off a lot of it. Yeah, you would just be treating it like a DSLR. So it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, and single shot and stuff. I would slow it down. But that's God. That stuff's so good. But yes, I would love to have someone with me at all times. Of um, course. <laughs> so I'm heading back to Vegas 
I'm not taking too much time away from here as per se because of we got to I mean, shit, we got to get ready to move. And hopefully Stephen's wife doesn't doesn't pop too soon <laughs> and we can get everything situated over there so that I'm good to figure and whatever the, the the weeks where Stephen's on paternity leave. Did you know my friend told me that in Europe you get like six months? Must be nice. How long do I get, Jared? Whatever you need. But we could. Oh, so I can we six months? Yeah, Stephen, because we you wouldn't have a job to come back to in six months. Like <laughs> my that's buddy, the thing. who installed the junction boxes for me for the fans, he got eight weeks. He's an electrician. I was very surprised about that. But is he in a business that has multiple people? Like, he is, and I big, explained that to business. him. I said, like, I'm basically fifty percent of the company, so it's very hard for me to step away for a long period of time uh, when I physically need to be there to record things with Jared. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I can't record on my own. It's really, I mean, we're trying to add another another editor, another person that would free you up. I mean, we've been trying for months um, in, in that vein, but, you know, that that's a goal. Um, but yeah. Uh, By the way, speaking of next week, I don't know what's going to happen with my house because I am on an easement where a sanitary sewer pipe is running through that easement. And apparently it just cracked recently. So they're going to have to rip up the entire middle of my property line uh, that I share with my neighbor. I think they own 10 feet on my side and 10 feet on the other side. That's where the actual easement is. Uh, so, yeah, we had guys out here the other day. I'm, I live next to a golf course. My backyard backs up against the golf course. So this easement pipe goes through the golf course to the other side of the neighborhood. And I saw them cutting down all this ornamental grass that's probably four or five feet tall that the golf course has never touched and they chopped it all down. I knew something was up and I saw all these city workers uh, hanging out and trying to figure things out. And then I saw them out front of my house and I went to chat with them and they're like, yeah, there's a, a crack in the sewer. We're probably going to rip all of this up, all of the stamped concrete walkway that I just recently put in a few years ago, my fence that I just put in about two, three years ago, uh, everything right on that property line, which is going to be lovely. And I don't know how much of a monkey wrench that's going to throw into my week if, if it's even going to happen because they said that there's a crack they just don't know where if it's on my side or the opposite side of the neighborhood to check the butthole <laughs> if it's just that side i should be okay they're just going to replace that side but the guy said it's from 1934 the actual easement uh and it's brick lining it's not even like concrete or piping it's just brick and it's Better sanitary sewer that's just leaking everywhere so that's going to be a fun journey uh, i did see you know, like USPS, if you sign up, they can send you daily emails of like what you're going to get in the mail that day. I did see today that I'm getting mail that says something about my dwelling. And I'm curious if that's a warning saying they're going to come and rip everything up. And the guy did tell me, he's like, hey, anything we rip up, we're going to completely restore and fix back up and put it the way you had it. I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's going to be half ass. Like I paid a premium for this kind of stamped concrete and stuff like that. Like I want it done right. Uh, can I hire the contractor? Stuff like that. So it's going to be a whole conversation I got to have with them. Uh, and they're going to rip up my beautiful lawn. That's what I'm most upset about. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that. that's the least of my worries. So so that'll be fun. Can't wait. So the, the, the last thing I wanted to go into was talking about threads real quick. Yes. Threads, uh, obviously, Instagram, which it's weird. Because I've used it one it's time Instagram. so far. <laughs> well, what's weird is it's, it's Instagram, but it's really Facebook because Facebook is Instagram. And um, they got 100 million users in five days. I was I was uh, 500,000. I was one of the first 500,000 because you have a number on your Instagram. Oh, that's you what that your number Instagram, is. That's what the number is. It's what it's your your number of when you signed up for threads, which was really easy to sign up for. And I and I see a lot of people talking it like they're all over it, like social media. I didn't like using Twitter. My Twitter was compromised. I didn't even get it back and I didn't care at this point. I am not caring about threads. I am not going to sit there and engage on there because I didn't engage in the first place and I don't want to. I really don't want to. It's a time suck. It fucks with my head. I should be out there doing something else, not sitting there reading and engaging on that. I don't care. Like it's not about I don't want to, you know, build it, it the crazy thing is you already build that following cuz I already have 25,000 people, but I don't want to I don't want to do it. It's not where I want my focus. That's the only good thing is it's not like it's starting over on an entirely new social media platform. You do kind of bring that following over because of the auto import of whoever you follow. I, I do like that feature. But at the same time, I almost wish I started fresh because now I'm just looking at Instagram basically, but on threads. Well, you could have easily clicked off the button to follow the people that... So when you signed up for threads... No, I know, says, but I... Do I, you want to follow those people? I said no. Correct. And I said yes. And now I kind of wish I said no because it's just like, what's the point? I'm just looking at the same stuff that people are posting on Instagram on here now. 
Right. And that's that's the other rub is like, do you is is Instagram going to get hurt? Because now why would I post images over to threads? Why would I post videos over to threads? The whole point of Instagram was at the well, the the modern point was to tell stories and share the stories and post your photos. And, and I still hate that Instagram recently tweaked the stories, uh, the size of the icon. So now only like two or three show up at the top where you, before there used to be a few. Well, do you know what else it does? That's annoying. What? The little stories, little round stories icons show up over when you're scrolling. Oh, they yes. W- yep. That's fucking stupid. So I swipe it up, but it doesn't stay swiped up. And, and it seems like it's not in order anymore. It just seems like it's like uh, if I refresh the app, for example, it just refreshes the stories on top of that, too. I want to I want to stay uh, on the stories that I usually watch from the you know from the people I usually watch. But it seems now it's just like kind of randomly sprinkling in different stories from people that I haven't looked at in quite some time. Yeah, it. I, I'm not using it. I'm going to just, I, I may, might post there, but I'm not going to sit there and, and interact. It's the same thing I do with Facebook. I didn't want to interact. It made me feel so much better because it's just an endless scroll of who cares. I don't care what you have to say, which is people can say the same thing about me. They don't care. So don't listen. If you don't want to hear what I have to say, then don't follow me. That's your choice. Um, and that's what I'm choosing to do. I don't I don't want to do that on you know, you get the whole Gary Vaynerchuk signing up real quick and you get like these other people and they're like, I'm just real happy to be here. I'm really <laughs> happy that you guys are here. Uh, this is a great way to engage. It's like is this that what is Gary the same said? bullshit. No, this is that's what Lewis Howes said. Yeah. And I was just like, Lewis Howes is just like, I'm so appreciative of everybody, and I'm like, come on, dude. Is Gary like this is the next big thing? Everyone needs to jump on this. Exactly. You need to sell yes. your garage sale items on threads. <laughs> Same Make thing as he always does. Dollars. <laughs> Quit your day job. Every uh, every time a new social media, but the difference this time is if you are a nobody on Instagram, you're a nobody on Threads. That's if true. you had a million followers on Instagram, you got a lot more followers on Threads of people that are engaging. But I know this from talking to other creators that I talk to every day that they feel overwhelmed already by another social media, a social network, and they're they're thinking about just focusing on two: yep. Instagram and YouTube. And I say it all the time: YouTube. Instagram, great places to focus. Yeah, instead of spreading it out and giving only 25% towards each you know, social media platform, just pick two and go 100% all, all in. And the other thing I was telling them is that you have to be okay with you're not always chasing that vanity subscriber number. It's not about having a million point five subscribers. It's about how many people are actually engaging with your work. Yep. So if you have a thousand good followers, a thousand, even 500, if you have 500 people that pay attention to you, you've built a great audience, a potential that you can do massive business with a small audience. I follow a lot of small YouTubers that do like lawn care and landscaping and stuff like that. And they're, I mean, they maybe have like 2000 subs, but they're getting 1500 views on their video. I mean, almost a hundred percent of their audience watching. That's, That's a big people deal. paying attention. That's yeah. a big deal. Yep. I mean, it's not like out of nowhere, you go from like zero subscribers and three weeks later you got over a million, but your fucking views don't, your, your views are bought and then you put up new videos and you don't get views on them. It's called cheating. People cheat on YouTube yeah. Bots. by buying, they, 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 they kind of try to tell you that they're not cheating because they're running ads, but you, here's how you know someone's cheating on YouTube. One, they had a million subscribers in three weeks. That's how you know they're cheating on on YouTube. Two, you look at videos that have, say, 4.5 million views, and they have like 40 comments, 200 likes. We had this happen to us with a Intel video that we did back in the day. It was a sponsored video. It was an agency we were working with, had money from Intel they needed to spend. So them wanting to look good with Intel juiced our video by running it as a pre-roll in front of other people's in front of photographers videos and we got people like i'm seeing this video everywhere those videos don't tra- those views don't translate to quality because there was only so what we, like 50 70 80 comments on there right less. it was it was like 120 likes basically no one's engaging with the video if you are buying video views which is nothing inherently wrong with running an ad to show up except when you run it in India and they're not valuable, but all you're really doing is hurting your engagement. Because now if you have a video that has four and a half million views on it, you've got 1.5 million subscribers in 30 fucking days, and then you end up putting up a new video that gets 4,000 views, that kind of tells you that there's a problem. 
that kind of tells you you're doing something wrong and it's going to hurt in the long run because you can't oh, yeah. continuously buy views because what's going to happen is you're going to then try to sell it to advertisers and you're going to do a disservice to advertisers because they're not going to get good results because you have fraudulent numbers. Exactly. They're going to see, hey, 1.5 million subscribers. This guy's, we're going to give them a bunch of money to put out a video and then it's going to get 3,000 views and they're not going to get their money's worth at all. No or, worry. Or it's going to get 3,000 to start and then they start paying for views and get it to a million, but those million will not translate to sales. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm making here is one, you got to put the work in. There is no shortcut to being successful with YouTube. You can spend money to build a following, but that's not an actual following when they're bots and not real people. So you can spend the money, but don't get the two confused. Don't get like, I shouldn't have even used the word following. You're getting somehow subscribers and somehow views, but that's not a following. I will take someone with a, a, a thousand, sorry, a hundred thousand subscribers that they've built over a two, three year period. I will take that organic reach over fraudulent, fake vanity numbers to make you feel good about yourself. Even though I just don't know how you cheat. Steven, I don't know how you cheat. It's like doing steroids. I, I like question how expensive it is to buy subscribers, to buy bots, because, you know, you type in get more YouTube subscribers in Google and you get a ton of different places that try and say, you know, hey, 5,000 subs in a month, 20,000 in, in a month. There's certain tiers that you can buy. Just click farms. They're just click farms. It's got to be expensive, though. It can't be that cheap, right? So what I'll tell you, because I knew if it was, I feel like everyone would be doing it if that was that inexpensive. But it doesn't help you. YouTube cracked down on it a, years ago, but there's ways around it, I'm sure. Um, and what happens when YouTube purges all the bots? You're going to lose half your subscribers if they're all fake. The right? bigger the bigger issue is if you add a million and a half subscribers in three weeks, and all of your video views are are generally bought, not the not the organic views that were there to begin with. There's still some of those, but what's happening is you're signaling to YouTube that especially if you buy a view, you, sorry, you advertise, someone clicks on, they get, it becomes a view, but they don't watch the video. So they're not engaging. They're not leaving comments. They're not, they're not liking and they're not physically subscribing because they're not real people. That's telling YouTube that your engagement sucks. We're not going to show it to anybody. So when you do post that new video that gets 4,000 views, your next choice of action is you're going to have to pay more money to get fraudulent fake numbers to match your other fraudulent fake numbers. And it's just an endless cycle of stupidity and cheating. And that's all I have to say about that, Stephen. So, yeah, I'm on one of these websites that offer, you know, uh, offer to boost your subscriber rate with real people. But clearly it's bots and they're charging like two hundred dollars a week to get more subscribers. And I don't know how many subs they'll give you in a week. But, yeah, it's not cheap if you're if you're constantly running this. Now, granted, you're probably going to get no, you're not going to get more views. So unless Those subscribers don't turn into views, yeah. they don't. Now, if you were running ads on Facebook and different types of ads that were actually engagement ads and you could track how many people are signing up for your email list, that's a different story. But when all you're doing is just getting vanity numbers and vanity subscribers, it doesn't pay off in the long run and it's going to crash and burn. I'm not jealous for when anybody cheats like this. I'm I would be jealous of well, I was jealous of Peter McKinnon back when he was growing. It took him nine months to get a million. He did it the real way. Yeah. Yeah, he did organically. He came by at the perfect time with perfect content, and I was fucking devastated. Just devastated because I was around for eight years at that point. And it was just like, I haven't hit a million. He's did nine months in. And it was just it was just one of those things. Mm -hmm. Just one of those things. And and I that Legitimate people, yeah, that's where the jealousy would lie. F fraudulent people, not at all. I'll laugh at them for cheating and thinking that it's important. So that's why you, there's no shortcuts in all this bullshit. And they're not going to prosper. You don't prosper because you get caught every time and it just hurts you in the long run. So put the damn work in. I've been working out, Steven. Look at these freaking <laughs> arms. I've been working out for 14 years, right before Frono's photo started. It's been a long trek to get here. It's just do it right. Do it right. And I just don't know how people live with themselves and justify cheating and live with it. There are people that do. They justify cheating in all sense I of the agree. words. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, no, it's it's okay because everybody else does it. Doesn't mean it's okay. Not my mentality, man. Yep. Uh, anyway, if you want to give us some feedback, 313-710-9729. That's uh, Texas at 313-710-9729. I got to go do some work. I got to, I got to do some more work. You got to do some stuff. Uh, and, uh, 
this episode 59 steven 59 try to uh hook us up with some five star ratings if you can tell us how you feel on apple Podcasts. leave a written review and uh hook us up on spotify as well or any other podcast platform that you choose to listen to us on thank you steven you have a good one thanks man you too i'm sure i'll talk to you later anyway i'm sure you'll call me in 10 minutes (laughs) yeah all right guys thank you very much for listening jared polinfronosphoto.com see ya bye